So, do you want to get in? There, Trip, not mine. Thomas, please, for the love of goodness, just look at the camera. Tell you what, uh, Sophia and Madison come around the side. Please, yeah, well done. Can you get in there? I know it's Jacob, like, we don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, big cheesy smiles, look into the camera. They can do that. You've ruined enough of those classic songs on that bus. <laughs> It was just the game, just basically playing football for the fun, not having to worry about oh, are we going to score, are we going to get for good points. It was more just a friendly that would keep you, just keep you going. <laughs> so in essence, that's what this is all about, it's just pure and utter football, yeah. no politics. <laughs> so, and you said earlier that it's clear that it went, it's gone on before, many, many decades before, kids playing with each other before. What about your parents and your dad? Obviously, if your dad was your, your dad's into football, yeah? He's into football, yeah. So, does he have stories about playing with the, the other members of the community, the opposite community? <sighs> Probably not, no. No, definitely not. So, how does that make you feel that you can and he couldn't? Or was, he didn't. It, I, I think it was the time that he was brought up and how everything was going on here, over here, and just how the, they were brought up when they were younger as well. But not, not to talk to anyone from a different community, basically. And how does that make, knowing that history, how does that make you feel now? How is important? Does that make this any more important, this project? Yeah, I would say it does because it's showing kids nowadays if their parents are telling them not to play with football with someone from a different community. It, it's showing them that you can and it's alright to do that. It's not in the sense of you need to be with someone while doing it. I mean, and therefore, what does your parents now say? or your re relations, older, senior citizens, what do they now say? Well, they basically, they know that I do this, and I'm basically five days a week at this. And we, they're just, it's basically, the not that don't care, but they're just like, right, that's what he's doing, fair play to him. So in essence, they are proud of what you're yeah. doing? Do they tell you? No. They're not no. supposed to. They're not supposed to. But at the same time, they clearly show signs. They're not saying to show you can't do that. They're saying you get on with that and fair play to your boy. Yeah. Which is their way of saying that probably they love you and their way of saying yeah. we've moved on. Definitely. They're awkward, aren't they, Pam? <laughs> 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 Well, my family, it was actually my nanny and granda I actually used to do the catering in here before all that over there got done up. So every Saturday I was around here and even if my mum was working, I was being mended by my nanny and granda. So I was just used to coming here and just sit and match the match from no wage. It's brilliant so it is because it's bringing two sides of the community together and it's stopping people going to the interfaces and fighting and ratting where it's more it's getting everyone in the football team, you're going on trips, you're up and down the country and you're playing other teams as well. So I think it's good too. congratulate Foiled Out Syndrome Trust and the work that they have been doing. They have been really visionary in what they have been doing. Um, they have been so inclusive in the young people and making sure that things are being led from the young people through the organisation and nothing is being imposed on people. It is all through collaboration and agreement and that's the best way to take things forward. So congratulations to everybody who has been involved, including yourselves, the, the Children's Football Alliance. It's been fantastic to get that involvement as well. So well done.
So with all the matches here, so any weekend you've got a match here, during the week, that grass will be cut twice a day, every day. Every day. So the morning time, this morning, they cut it up and down, and then the afternoon, they cut it over and back. And what they do is they cut it down to a height of 30 millimetres, because they reckon that 30 mil is the ideal height for both Gaelic football and for hurling. So we said, you can some the string still out, it's not. The string was here this morning, so they were going over and back this morning, and then, see the man across there? I think he's just put the string out for the next cut, but it'll be up and down, and say 30 mil. Sorry? No, the, what they do with the paint is they paint that in the morning of the games. So they you know, that would still be good up to then, but they give it a couple of things, they give it a couple of runs over. So what they do with that is they give it a run over on the morning of the game uh, with the, the, the lines. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, get out of here. The, the project definitely does spark um, questions and you can see kids going away thinking well, what did mum and dad play when they were younger, well, what did Sir do when he was younger and what did I do now so that, that's what I, I've done in some of the the meetings that I've had with kids is I've broken down to this is what I've done, find out what your parents do and what do you actually do and you can see such a, a divided answer that I, I said earlier that I was out playing all the time your parents might have been doing something similar, but what do you do now? So it, it, it sparks questions for them to ask other friends and other people, aunties and uncles, even as far away as grandparents. So it, it, it's an interesting one. He's actually one of my best friends, so it's quite ironic that as a child I was really, really skinny. He was really heavy. And he said, did I want to go to rugby one night? And I thought, what rugby? I've never heard of it. And went down to training with him. It just stuck from that. But then in secondary school as well, my PE teacher was a huge influence on me. Um, he, he's the reason I wanted to get into teaching. Oh, I was playing football in a car park or playing Kirby or Padsy. It's what, collecting footballs from underneath cars, playing basketballs with makeshift hoops, running around, playing things like tag. You know what I mean? It was never in the house. It was always sporting one way or another. It was either running or football or... He made, he made a pitch out of, what, two jumpers on the floor? That was... That was how it was. It's always been sporting. Like I said, I just absolutely love football growing up. I was the youngest of four children. My brother played football, my dad played football, and um, for Irish League teams. And I just, I thought I would love to play, but I had no opportunities. I played on the boys' team in, in primary school, but there was no girls' team. And then when I got a little bit older in the secondary school, um, they had, a, they, they, uh, in secondary school, they, they had a five side tournament for girls, and I went and played in it. And when I was playing in that tournament, uh, Northern Ireland were watching, and I had picked to play for the under 16 team. And then from that, I started playing for Northern Ireland. And when I was 18, I said, I really, really love football, but I, my parents were like, you have to go to university. So I thought of a good way to go to university and play football, and so I got a scholarship to America. Parents I know were massively enthusiastic about it because they're the people that are sharing the stories with their children and they're sending them in. And they love the pictures that are going up on Facebook and they love the website that's been set up for them. And it's, that's actually created a real buzz. And then one of our learning assistants brought in her story. And then they do the kind of the assembly. And the students get up and they read an assembly. And then they do their piece pitch, you know, dedication. All of that created a buzz, it was endless buzz, and the parents are really engaged with it. We know, because they're liking the posts and they're sharing the posts, and we, we know they're loving it. Well, football makes our shared history was basically the whole year group. So the students that were involved in this were allowed to get involved in, in it, whether they were in an SEN class or whether they were in the top class. This project led, you know, was perfect for this, absolutely perfect for that, because we were able to bring all abilities in terms of the girls and the boys, it was the perfect time. We brought in different speakers and so on. We brought in local football clubs here in this area, which was really interesting. And we also looked at the history of Northern Ireland players. We went to Windsor Park. And this project really, as far as that's concerned, as the whole package is concerned, that's really what drew me to the project.
All right. So my name is Jonathan Evans O'Hare. My background is in history, and I've worked for most of my uh, uh, career since graduating at EuroCLIO, which is the European Association of History Teachers. And uh, before leaving EuroCLIO in 2018, one of the projects that uh, we were able to kick off was um, Football Makes History. Uh, started with a couple of history teachers who thought that they might be able to teach the 20th century through football. EuroCLIO's history teachers trying to find a uh, space to create a new project is something that happened uh, at the fringe of various conferences. And the first time that it actually came uh, to a center stage was in the EuroCLIO annual conference in Belfast in 2016 and uh, actually the meeting uh, that we, we were able to take one day in the program and open it to whoever wanted to join and uh, I think around 10 to 15 history teachers from like six, seven, eight different countries uh, convened for one day to brainstorm and consider how they might set up a project and that was actually at uh, Queen's University Belfast. Uh, in a room looking over the libraries, I, I remember very well.